Hello again, YouTube. This is a what's known as an anemometer. It's a piece of equipment that sits on top of a building and it catches the wind in these little cups and it rotates and it tells uh, a computer how fast the wind speed is outside. Uh, this is a, an important piece of equipment. If you have windows that are open in a building, maybe they're open on the roof and it starts to get windy outside then a piece of equipment like this is important to tell uh, the computerised system that the weather's not so good and that it needs to close the windows to, to prevent damage. Normally I, I hide brand names and model numbers but this one uh, I don't mind showing you because I believe this is obsolete. It's, uh, the, the company don't appear to make these anymore. And this is a... I'm sure they wouldn't mind me showing you because it's a very high quality piece of equipment. Um, it has failed, but like I say, it's a good number of years old, um, and I'm pretty sure I know why it's failed. Um, in fact, you could probably see some evidence here of why it's failed. I'm fairly sure it's weather beaten. But you can tell straight away, you can tell from the weight of it, um, it's quite a heavy piece of kit. A lot of that weight is going to be in the aluminium body of it. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is this will be a milled piece. Um, it's a fairly chunky piece of aluminium, but we'll have a look inside. Let's see if we can get it open. We'll take a look inside and see why it stopped working. Okay. So I can see in there there is some. Let's just pull that cable out. There is some evidence of rust in there. So I had a, an idea that water was the issue. Um, and that's because this should spin quite freely. But if you listen, I'll bring the microphone up. That's not, that's not free. There's a lot of friction there. There's a lot of squeaking going on. So I'm fairly sure the shaft or well, somewhere down here has corrosion, water's gotten inside um, and that has caused this to, to fail over time. If I grab one of these and you can see there's a lot of corrosion in there, it's a lot of, it looks like powdered rust, it's a very thick powder. So. We'll check this out in detail, but I'm fairly sure what's happened here is uh, water's gotten into the top of the shaft, possibly through the grub screw that holds the cap on. It's then gotten down into the the neck, and something in here, whether it's a, a washer or a shim, or maybe even the shaft itself, we'll find out in, in a minute what it's made of, but it looks like something's started to corrode. Because this spins, and you can hear it's quite squeaky. The squeaking noise comes from friction, and that friction has probably powdered the the oxide that's formed, and it's dropped down onto the circuit board. So that's what's stopped this working. Um, this is the first time I've looked inside one of these, but I can see. There we are. So we can see there. It looks like an LED. So. I'm fairly sure this is going to be some form of optical rotary encoder because it looks like there's a, a disc in here that has teeth cut from it so as this spins the LED there will be a receiver on the board and that's more than likely counting the, the pulses as the, the disc rotates. But let's see if we can strip it down a bit further get a look at, separate the two components and have a look at each of them and see if we can find out what's gone wrong Okay, so we can see there's quite a lot of uh, oxide on the top of the board. Um, and I can see from here, there's a little pinhole through the board, a bit bigger than a pinhole. But that'll be the, the optical receiver, so the LED will transmit the light and the receiver will receive it in there. So when this stopped working, two things happened. Initially, it was... Initially it was uh, reporting that the wind speed was lower than it actually was. So I think that was because the shaft here had 
accrued quite a lot of friction so it wasn't spinning as fast as it could have and then it stopped reporting altogether and it said the wind speed was zero and it's quite likely that what's happened is this little hole where the receiver is filled up with this dust so it wasn't able to see the pulses anymore so it probably just thought one of the the fingers on this disc was sitting over the top and it was it was uh, stopped so let's see if we can get this off So this is just a little disc, it looks like it's just uh, some sort of steel, I could be wrong, um, but it looks like steel, it's maybe nickel coated, there's no, there's, well there's very slight corrosion here in the centre here, around the screw hole, some very slight corrosion there, but other than that the, the disc itself doesn't have corrosion, the fingers aren't corroded, you can see that the rust's gone all over my fingers, but it's not coming from that. I think some of it's gathering on there. I'll just put these aside. So it looks like to get into the shaft, I need to get either the base or the top off. Now the base, this little washer, I think it's a shim. Or a, a bush, it's just rotating. Um, let's see if we. Oh yeah, this is. This wants to come off. So that looks like a brass uh, standoff. So that's that's fine. That's not corroding. This looks like aluminium. Again, it's brown because there's a uh, powdered. Uh, steel rust on there, or iron rust, oh, and then this wants to come out. So we've got a little bearing here, and before I go any further, I'll just see if I can feel if that's, oh, that bearing's gone, it feels really rough. You might be able to hear it. Yeah, there's a fair amount of corrosion on the balls in that bearing, so that's failed. You probably, again, I'll bring up the microphone. You can feel that bearing's also gone. That's crusty as hell. So the bearings have failed, that's been the main uh, failure mode. That's what's caused the, the unit to stop working. Um, but what's led to the bearings failing appears to be some form of water ingress. That looks like the end of the screw, and I think it's snapped off. So you're getting this white powder here. Um, that'll be a, a mixture of rust from the screw and a bit of oxide on the aluminium. Because it appears that that's lost its head. Now I know this one's lost its head um, because I, when I was initially diagnosing the fault I tried to remove this screw and the head came off straight away and that's because the, the corrosion had already taken a good hold here. So I could try and drill these out um, but I'd have to put that on a, a bench drill and I don't have that here so that's maybe a job for another day. I'm going to have a look at the board now, see what's on the board. Um, before I do this, uh, I need to apologise if, if you hear a lot of wind noise. It's getting stormy outside and uh, I do my filming in my shed outside, so there's not an awful lot I can do about that, so apologies in advance. Um, so, let me just uh, grab a chopstick. Um, the board, this side of the board is populated with a few components. This side of the board, all it has on it is this infrared emitter. Um, 
So the active component on here is this this little uh, black and gold chip here and this infrared transmitter and you can probably see on the board there it's designated TR1 and on the other side there we are, it's also TR1 uh, it's also got LED so in fact I guess it's LED LED one, oh, yep, LED one. So it's a light emitting diode, but it's likely that it emits infrared light. And then underneath here, there's a tiny little hole in the board. Can you see that? Yep, just there. So the the disc that we we saw earlier, this disc here, as that rotates, the fingers on it block the light passing down through. So this part's the transmitter, underneath the receiver. That's the that's how it, it uh, measures the, the wind speed and creates the pulses. So if we look at these two here, this pair of cables are the power. So you've got, uh, this takes between 6 and 26 volts DC, so quite a wide power range. Uh, you've got two big diodes here and a few supporting components. Uh, they'll be there for uh, polarity protection, just to keep the device safe in case you accidentally switch the polarity around. Um, this little chip here, uh, this is a this is an MIC, so it's a microchip, 2951. It's a linear regulator, it's a 5 volt regulator, which then provides the, the power, the smooth power. So you've got a couple of little capacitors here as well. They'll be to smooth the output. Yeah, focus. Um, they'll be to smooth the output for this set of components. So this is the active circuitry. Uh, and you've got a little chip here. Now this chip's a CMOS comparator. Um, the model number on it, let's see. It's got conformal coating, so it makes it difficult to see. But the model number is an LMC67, and it's a CMOS comparator. Um, and basically, it takes the signal coming off of this component, off this transceiver, and it converts it into a 5 volt pulse. So instead of uh, you know, you might imagine as this this is passing, it's passing pretty quickly. You'll have um, fluctuating voltage levels. It'll all, almost be like an analog waveform. So this will compare it, and then it'll convert it into a, a nice uh, five volt square wave. And that square wave signal comes out of this yellow cable, uh, and that goes off to whatever you're going to use to measure the pulses. So that's that's how that one works. On this particular job. That signal then goes into this here. This is a part of this pair of sensors. So this one measures the wind speed. That's the the vane anemometer. Sorry, the cup anemometer. This is a wind vane. So you probably uh, see these something similar to this on top of old churches, where you've got maybe a you know a, a picture of a or a, a cutout of a, a cock and a. So it'll be a, a, an old-fashioned weather vane. This is a modern equivalent. And this plate here is the equivalent of that, that uh, the bird that catches the wind. Uh, the purpose of this is this will trail in the wind and this bullet part in the front will point into the wind. So if the wind's heading straight down, it'll go like this. And then you can measure the rotation of the wind, so where the wind's coming from, and this unit will output that as a signal. Now this is quite clever because the way this works is it takes the wind speed in on one of these cables. It takes the wind direction and then it puts it out on another cable. Um, it's actually got more than one option. You can This also puts out an analogue uh, signal as well. Um, but we're going to have a look inside this in a second so you can uh, have a look at how it works. So again we have a two part device. We've got the part on the top that rotates and again it's a very very similar construction to the the anemometer, the same sort of case, and these are these are milled from a single piece of aluminium, and then the O-rings inserted, the the, uh, the bearings inserted, so they're a, they're actually quite heavy. It's a very high quality piece of equipment. You'll notice there's a, a hole drilled here, and on the bottom of the case, you've got two little holes drilled, and they're roughly in the same orientation. There's a good reason for that, because uh, they tell the device which direction is north. There's a sticker here as well that used to say N, but it's been sun bleached. 
So the little holes here, um, they determine where north is. And that's important because when you put this up on a roof, if you don't point it, if you don't know which way is north, then when you take a reading from it, that reading's going to be wrong. So what we have here is, again, you've got a rotating shaft. When it comes down through, the, this bit rotates here. This bit is a magnet. Um, let's see if we've got something that's yep, magnetic. So um, it's polarised, in fact. Let's uh, grab a screwdriver and see if we can... Yeah, so that's north, which is... That's north of the magnet, which is uh, pointing straight forward. So, and then the other one will be south. So, yeah. See how the the tip of the screwdriver's drawn to one end of the magnet, so it's either north or south here. Um, now again, that's important. And if I was to take that off, there probably are markings on here for reassembly, um, but possibly not. I mean, effectively, you don't want to take this off. If you are going to take it off, you know, if you've got one of these and you're going to take it off, put a mark on it before you do that because otherwise your rotation is going to be wrong. So put this bit aside for now. So this part here, this is what we're interested in. Um, we got a bit more circuitry on the back here. We've got this, this big uh, chip here. I'll just discharge myself before I touch anything. Um, We've got a chip, and that chip Let's see, there's a, it's a pick You can probably see it better than I can um, It is It's a pick 16F 873 Oops. So that's a that's a microcontroller, it's a programmable microcontroller um, and I f in fact, yeah, there you are, I saw a, a, a header on the board here so we've got a, a little 5-pin header so that's probably for programming that chip We've also got a crystal on here, um, the oscillator so that's needed for the chip but it's uh, that alludes to how this then communicates with the panel um, now I've already had a look at the, the spec on here, of, I, I know how this works um, but the fact that there's a, a, a crystal tells me that this is doing serial communication The way this measures the, the wind direction is this little device here so it's a little 6 pin component There are no markings on it, I've had a good look at it already uh, There might be markings underneath but I'm not going to take it off But I know what it is, it's a Hall effect sensor and the way this works is, as this magnet rotates above there, the the Hall effect sensor, you probably have two sensors in here. So normally a, a Hall effect sensor just detects the presence of an, a magnetic field. But you probably have uh, two sensors inside this unit and it will tell you the strength of the field. So you'll, you'll be able to tell which direction this is facing in. Um, so that's a way of maybe, you know, effectively a Hall array. Uh, because it does 360 degree rotation um, and that that's pretty much it that's the that component there is the, the single component measuring the, the rotation on top of the the board you've got the the main processor we've got a crystal and then we've got a couple three smaller chips here again we've got a, a linear regulator so to uh, to smooth and control the the five volts that's driving the rest of the board and then we've got a couple of little op amps um, and they're pretty much there because the once this uh, has done its thing uh, you're looking to amplify the signals you've got a uh, signal coming in from the other unit and then you've got the signal coming out from this so the op amps are there uh, to manage those analog signals so again we've got, we've got two cables for voltage in this case it's black and red the blue cable here takes the input from the other unit, so from the anemometer. So we connect that to the output of the anemometer, and that brings the analog signal in, the, the 5 volt pulses. We've then got a white cable, which is uh, the ground for the signal, and then we've got two signal cables. Uh, so they both, they're both uh, referenced to this white cable, the ground. So the yellow cable 
is the analog output, that, that 1.8 volt output. So get rid of that one. The other one we're interested in is this one. That's the, the green cable. Now this little pick chip is programmed <coughs> to output an NMEA signal. It's a serial signal. And the NMEA, uh, I can't remember exactly what it stands for. It's uh, Nautical and Marine Equipment Association, I, I believe. Um, and it's a standard, it's a serial signal. It's a standard that's recognised by a lot of... Uh, equipment that was designed for use in boats and, and obviously uh, wind speed and wind direction are really useful when it comes to boats so this is a, a device that's probably quite commonly used in the marine environment certainly from the quality of it I and mean, when you look at the the o-rings that are in play in it um, it would suggest that it's uh, designed for a marinized environment it's a very high quality unit um, now i'm using this arduino uno uh, and i've got this board on it it's not a shield it's just a an rs232 uh, board that i've got it's just has got a little max 232 chip on it okay i now have my two sensors connected correctly through my max 232 interface and onto my arduino board and if you have a look here you'll see there's a pulse happening here that's happening four times a second and then on the Arduino board, just down here, under that cable, there's a similar pulse. And if your eyes keen enough, you'll see there's a very slight delay between them. Because there's a processing time between this unit and this unit. So all in all, it's you know we're talking milliseconds here, so it's not going to make any difference to the, the operation of this sort of circuit. Um, now, no matter what I do with these sensors that pulse isn't going to change because it's a serial pulse it's the what's happening with the interpreting the wind speed and direction has nothing to do with how often this transmits if i was to measure it on the other cable so on the yellow cable from the from the weather vane and directly off of this yellow cable then that'd be a different matter because i'd be looking for analog pulses but in this case it's just all serial Okay, so here we have the output from the serial output from the sensors. So this is coming from the wind, uh, the wind vane, uh, and you can probably see there we have well a bunch of characters, um, and they don't really mean much to us. It doesn't it doesn't read well for a human. Um, you've got a dollar and then M H W A S. You've got that repeated, and then you've got some values. Uh, you've got an R, some zeros, and an N. Uh, then you've got WSD, then some values, and then some other numbers. Now, those contain the information coming from these two sensors. And if I rotate the weather vane, you see the values are changing. Um, now, and if I rotate the anemometer, you see we should get some some more values changing. But again, it's a it's a bunch of random numbers, so it doesn't doesn't read well, very well. To a machine, it reads well. Uh, in fact, one thing that's quite obvious there, you see it as you rotate. If I rotate the the wind vane, we've got L changes to R. So we've got left and right. Now I'd imagine that would be designed, or that code would be in there for a, a nautical environment, so that you know whether you're prevailing winds coming from the port or the starboard side of your ship um, so that might just give a, a simple system an input that just you know gives a mast an instruction to move um, so but for us we want to be able to read it so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change uh, the code uh, I'm going to make the code a little bit more complicated and see if we can pull out the relevant figures and see if we can uh, make it make sense to us so what we have now in the in the small screen, this is the Arduino serial monitor. And you can see I've got two values. I have wind direction and wind speed. So the wind direction at the moment is saying 121. If I take the the wind vane and my north is here. Let's, uh, let's have a look, there's a sticker there, so that's north. So if I point at north, the wind direction should either go to 360 or zero so 
There we are. If I put it, there we are. So that's it. Due north. So we're at zero, three five nine or zero. Um, if I rotate it round, let's just rotate it round the other way. It should go roughly one eighty. There you are. One ninety eight. One ninety five. One eighty two. So as this spins about in the wind, you'll get varying uh, figures back on that value. So that tells your your system which direction the wind's coming from. The other unit, now this this isn't working very well because it's got no bearings in it, but if I rotate this, you'll see that value for wind speed starts to rise. We're up at 1.3, 1.4, and if I start to rotate it a bit faster, and we are, we're up to 3, 4, 5. Um, so that's measuring in metres per second. Um, and you can hear that was probably hear that was quite noisy because it's missing its bearings. And as I'm rotating it like that, I'm probably doing it some damage. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, from time to time, I do take apart things uh, from my work life. And they tend to be things that most people don't see uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, and something like this, most people won't see in their life. Uh, so if you did find this interesting and you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.